Hello again, um, Dane Nix here coming to you, uh, old inky fingers, uh, to talk about uh, Japanese fountain pen repair and restoration. And uh, somebody asked me about um, replacing an ink sack on an old uh, Japanese um, lever filling pen. And um, so, uh, in, in fact, the, uh, the reality is that uh, the uh, ink sack, the, the lever filling pens for the Japanese pens are identical to the American pens. It's identical, the identical uh, you know, mechanism, and it works uh, in this very same way. Um, and so I thought that I'd go ahead and, uh, and just demonstrate that for you. And I'm also going to talk about how to uh, restore a uh, uh, aerometric pen uh, uh, for, uh, you know, uh, that shows up an awful lot of the pens that, uh, that, that you find these days. Now, the newer pens, uh, the old pens, you don't find that many uh, lever fillers with the Japanese pens. Most of the old pens that I've dealt with have been uh, eyedroppers. Uh, and of course, as I've shared uh, on prior videos, I really love the eyedroppers. Um, and then uh, also the newer pens are all cartridge converter, uh, uh, almost without exception, except for the, uh, for instance, the large uh, uh, Pilot uh, Emperor, which is actually an eyedropper, very much like the old uh, Band A pens. Uh, so I have here a... Uh, um, a pilot uh, that uh, that I've actually taken apart already, and uh, the, of course the first step in repairing uh, uh, or restoring one of these pens is to uh, get it open, and uh, that can be a challenge. Uh, and you have to be very careful with these because uh, uh, many of these old pens are made out of celluloid, and uh, I've found that many of the uh, 1930s, 1940s uh, Japanese pilots. Uh, have very, very brittle, um, uh, you know, barrels and so on. And I've actually broken a few. Uh, and been. I was very, very careful in doing it. And uh, still, for whatever reason, uh, it did not end well. Um, this one, uh, in, in plain black, they're uh, much, uh, you know, uh, easier to work with. And uh, so, uh, but anyway, so uh, the, the first step is to actually soak the pen. And um, I generally will soak them for... Um, as long as it takes. It may take uh, uh, a day or two or maybe even three uh, until you can actually get it apart easily. And um, so uh, you, hopefully uh, they will come apart, um, you know, easily um, by hand. If not, what I will do is I get a, uh, a piece of rubber uh, hose, you know, uh, out of the, I cut a piece, I think I've talked about it before. Um, and uh, with my pliers, I very, very gingerly, and it has to be very gingerly, it has to be very careful. I'll, I'll show you, I didn't bring it over, but I'll, I'll get one to show you. Um, so uh, you can go to uh, uh, Ace Hardware and buy a length of, uh, of uh, of hose. Uh, it, this is water heater hose uh, from the engine or go to your auto parts store and get it and get a foot and it'd probably be two or three dollars is all. And uh, I get uh, a couple of different sizes. They, they, they come in different uh, sizes and I get, you know, three or four. I've got, you know, in the garage, I've got uh, three or four lengths. And you simp simply uh, put it over the the uh, the section and uh, and now this very, very gingerly, very, very gingerly, just, uh, you know, work it uh, with your, uh, and I always hold on to the, the barrel, and then just very gingerly hold it and, and uh, try to extract it. Uh, if it resists at all, put it back in the water. Uh, you do not want to ruin uh, an old vintage pen. Now, this one, uh, this is new old stock, so it didn't ha I didn't have any trouble getting it apart. Uh, and then, of course, what you do is you want to uh, clean out the old, uh, the old sack, and I use, uh, you know, just a, uh, a, uh, a hooked uh, uh, tool and I reach in and I just pull out the old sack. Hopefully it comes out easily. Uh, usually uh, they fall apart into a thousand pieces and you have to maybe use a thin screwdriver uh, to get them. You have to be careful because the uh, mechanism is actually usually a J-bar, at least for the Japanese pens. Uh, and it's simply a metal, simply a piece of metal that uh, goes uh, inside uh, the barrel and goes down and around and then it's got a long lever here uh, and when you uh, use the the lever here it depresses that little metal bar and 
and uh, you know depresses the ink sac. Uh, if, uh, for instance, if that's ever broken, you can actually get new ones. Uh, uh, Dale Beebe at uh, Pen Tooling has got those on his site, and they're a couple bucks a piece is all. Uh, so you can replace them. It's not that hard to replace them. Uh, so the next step is to actually uh, then, so once you got it cleaned off, uh, you clean off any of the, the residue uh, from around the section. You want to get all of that off. Uh, and it's often hard and use a pointed little tool to actually uh, re remove that. And uh, uh, it, uh, you could, I've got here, a, this is very sharp, of course, uh, uh, and you just, uh, you know, remove all the old residue and be very careful not to hurt yourself because that's very sharp. Uh, you can use a, a screwdriver or a pointy uh, piece. You get a, an ink sack, um, and I've got a box of them here. Uh, where do you get your ink sacs? Um, I uh, work with, I get mine from uh, the uh, ink sac company. They're on the internet and you can buy those. They're a couple bucks a piece uh, for your sacs. Uh, they have a, a, a collector's uh, group and a professional group and you get a hundred sacs um, for, uh, you know, I think a hundred sacks these days is a couple hundred bucks, but uh, you can get fewer numbers and, uh, and of course that costs less. So the next step uh, in, in that is you, you go ahead and get your ink sac. Um, you, uh, you figure out how long you want it. Um, so what I normally do is I just set it down there. I, anymore, uh, I, you know, eyeball it and lay it there and then lay my ink sac down and, and then cut it to length uh, with my, my tool. I actually demonstrated this um, in the uh, knob fillers uh, as well. It's the very same uh, technique. Take your uh, shellac, and I, as I said uh, earlier on the other one, uh, you can buy shellac uh, at Ace. You can get a small can of it for about five bucks, or, or you can buy from any of the pen retailers, uh, buy a little jar of it for uh, five to seven or eight dollars. Um, you paint the uh, the shellac on the section and uh, just put it on there uh, sparingly. You don't need a whole lot. And this, uh, this little tool you can get to uh, actually... Oops. And of course, that's always fun. So getting getting this, it's actually counter counterintuitive because when you push it, it spreads the sack apart. Feed it on there. Push it on uh, so that uh, it fits flush. I always put a little powder uh, talc on the sack. It just helps it to feed into the, the pen easily. When I put it back together, I like to line the nib up with the lever and it should just uh, push back together easily. I don't, I don't seal, I don't put any shellac on the, uh, on the section going into the pen or anything like that and push it until it seats. And uh, very simple, it's done and uh, you're ready to write. Now in my previous video, I talked about taking out the nib, which anytime you restore a pen you want to and cleaning out the feed and then uh, resetting uh, that nib uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the pen. Um, now, one of the things I didn't talk about, and uh, folks often ask about, uh, you know, uh, fixing nibs. I don't do any of the, the nib work at all, and I send all of my nibs to other people. If, if there's a tie that's broken or uh, not broken, but bent or whatever else, I have somebody else uh, fix that, and they'll do that for 25 or 30 bucks. And it's worth it to have somebody who's an expert on that. Uh, I just don't, uh, I don't like to mess with those because, again, the nib is the, the most part, important part of the pen. Uh, and so uh, I try to, you know, let somebody who's really an expert do that. Uh, actually, there's a number of different videos online that talk about how to adjust nibs. Now, uh, this is a narrow metric pen. And um, it's another variation, really, of a sacked pen. And this one is uh, completely uh, visible, uh, translucent, transparent, so you can see what's going on with it. And uh, so you often see, um, you know, Parker 51s with an aerometric um, filling system. And all that is is basically a sack. And I'll, I'll demonstrate 
for you. So uh, I'm going to unscrew the barrel. And so with the narrow metric, you've got this little metal uh, housing, and then you've got a little piece where you uh, depress it. And there's a sack inside, and uh, you simply, uh, when there's a sack there, you just depress it, let go, and then uh, you know it, it sucks in the ink. So uh, if you're if you've got an aerometric pen, I've actually seen a lot of aerometrics on Japanese pens. Uh, what you have to do is you have to get this metal housing off, and I've already done this one, so it'll come easily. Uh, if it if it resists, then soaking is the answer. And uh, so you know I pull it off, and and, and again it's just uh, what you have to do then is with the old ones is that there's probably sack residue inside, and you have to use a, a sharp tool or a flathead screwdriver and, and get all of that uh, old sack out, and make sure that it's completely clean. Um, and then, um, so I've already cut my sack. And uh, again, the same exact thing, uh, use a little bit of shellac. Um, again, uh, you will, will have cleaned the, uh, uh, the area here where the sack is going to connect and put just a a little bit of uh, shellac on there. Now, what this tube is, um, and you'll find this on uh, a number of the pins, uh, so when you depress the, the sack, uh, what happens with that is that uh, you get just get, um, you know, one uh, depression and, and the sack come and the ink uh, flows into the pen. But this little tube, uh, I think it was at, uh, Eversharp that actually came up with this idea, or maybe it was Parker 51 because it's got the same system. But every time that with this little uh, tube, every time that you depress and release, it brings uh, uh, Inca in up to the level of the top of the uh, of this little tube. And uh, it's a great way for getting more ink uh, into your pen. So uh, it works uh, pretty well. And, uh, and I uh, and I like that now. So uh, once again, I use this little tool. Again, it's a little bit counterintuitive in terms of how it works. It's a little bit more difficult with the tube, uh, but still, it's the same idea. So, feed it down over, and then push it on. Okay. And then simply take your, your metal piece, and uh, I like to, I didn't do it on this one, but I, I like to add a little bit, again, calc. Or powder on uh, on there, and I, I line up the depressing uh, piece, this little uh, finger uh, thing, and uh, now I might even put it on this. I might put a little shellac here to actually seal that, and then push it uh, down until it seats uh, flush with your uh, with the section with the the screws screwed in part, and. Uh, and basically now uh, it's restored. You just re, uh, depress it, and I'll put it back together. Uh, this is sort of cool. Uh, it's not unusual for you to find uh, these transparent uh, demonstrator pens uh, on Japanese uh, sites, and uh, I really like it. I actually put a. It came to me without a nib, and I put a, a pilot nib on it, uh, and it, it works really well. So it's a great little pen. So that's uh, two different kinds of, uh, of pens to, to you know, re restoration Japanese pens. And, uh, you know, first of all, a, a lever filler. Uh, secondly, uh, an aerometric pen. And uh, so uh, just uh, sort of fun with those. Now, uh, in getting your pen apart, uh, as I said, uh, the best bet is to simply soak it. Now, a lot of folks like to use ultrasonic cleaners. Um, so... You know that there's some pros and cons with that, but uh, if you think about what an ultrasonic cleaner is doing, it's actually feeding, uh, you know, sound waves uh, into uh, the water uh, and causing, you know, some, uh, you know, hopefully the the cleaning uh, mechanism, if you will, uh, through the uh, through the water. Um, so you have to be careful with those. Uh, the most of our old pens are either hard rubber or uh, celluloid. And I've actually watched a celluloid pen turn colors uh, in an ultrasonic cleaner. So you have to be very careful uh, with those uh, if you're going to use those. I, I just recommend uh, soaking uh, without the ultrasonic cleaning. Um, uh, if uh, you've got a hard rubber pen, they really don't like water. Uh, and usually uh, black hard rubber, they will turn uh, an ugly brown. Uh, you can restore that, but it can be a lot of work. Uh, and so uh, I like 
uh, with my uh, Japanese pens that are made out of uh, ebonite or hard rubber. Uh, I like to, uh, you know, just soak the piece uh, for the uh, eyedropper pens. I've actually demonstrated on the other pen, uh, on the other uh, uh, video, that what I do is uh, to uh, soak uh, to get the, uh, uh, the the rod out and to get this little uh, threaded washer out. I just simply put the water inside the cap, uh, maybe with a solution. Uh, anchor, uh, I think it's uh, Koinor has actually got some cleaner. It's wonderful, and uh, and then you know put it down and then uh, let it, let it soak that way without soaking the entire pen because um, you know the the immersing a hard rubber pen into water can uh, cannot be a good thing. So. Uh, so anyway, that's some uh, insight about, uh, you know, how to work on some of these pens. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, simply email me uh, or leave it on the YouTube uh, site. Um, uh, my email is d-a-y-n-i-x at aol.com, danix at aol.com. Um, I actually have a website, uh, daneswritesite.com. It's uh, d-a-y-n-e-s-w-r-i-t-e-s-i-t-e.com. And on there, I've got a few pens for sale. I've also got a lot of information. I've gotten really heavy into the um, history and culture of Japanese pens, especially on the uh, Makie pens that I really enjoy uh, collecting. And uh, what do all those uh, symbols, the, uh, the uh, uh, cherry blossom uh, or the, uh, the uh, maple, ma maple leaves, deer, uh, the koi fish, or whatever. What do all those uh, symbols mean, and uh, you know, what do they mean within the Japanese culture? And I found that to be really uh, interesting. So, uh, any questions? Just let me know. And uh, you know, hey, thanks for uh, watching my video, and let me know what you think about it. Uh, take care. Bye.